live from Urbis, this is Channel M's Lunchtime News and these are today's headlines. Up in smoke, Marshall Pumps, one of Oldham's longest established companies, is hit by an early morning blaze. Um, oh, there's no doubt we'll, we'll continue trading. Um, one way or another, we'll, uh, we'll make our way through. Goodbye to the man behind the music. Johnny Roadhouse, the Manchester legend, dies aged 88. Johnny the Sax Roadhouse, as he was known, is seen here playing the saxophone at his beloved music shop. Even at the start of this year, in his late 80s, he still worked there six days a week. And Hume's Highland hero, Penny the Terrier, saves her owner from a fire. Um, I worked the night shift and uh, I was in bed. And I was in bed a, a good six hours. And then um, I woke up hearing Penny um, barking and scratching the door. And I thought, oh, you know what's on with her? Because the moment she's downstairs, she's not allowed upstairs. And I, went, and I opened the door and the house was just full of smoke. A very good afternoon to you. First this lunchtime, an investigation's underway after a major blaze at one of Oldham's longest established companies. Flames ripped through premises of Marshall Pumps in the early hours of this morning. With the details, here's Kevin Duffy. Well, the first thing I knew was a call about three o'clock in the morning to say that um, there's a serious fire at the works. Got down here and of course the fire brigade were already in attendance. By then the, uh, the fire had been pretty well put out. Um, and we could see very little because obviously it was pitch dark, but um, it was already apparent that the downstairs office here was completely gutted. It should have been a quiet day off on a sunny bank holiday. Instead, Marshall Pump's chairman, Paul Marshall, surveys the damage to the company premises. When firefighters arrived on the scene here at Marshall Pump's in Oldham, the blaze had already taken a very firm hold. There were flames erupting from the ground floor and smoke billowing from the first and second floors. And at the height of the fire, 20 firemen from three stations across Oldham were involved in tackling the flames. Now, at this stage, the cause of the fire isn't yet known, but it is being treated as suspicious, and police are part of the ongoing investigation. But Mr Marshall was optimistic that business will go on, despite the devastation. Um, oh, there's no doubt we'll, we'll continue trading. Um, one way or another, we'll, uh, we'll make our way through. We, 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 there is other accommodation within the building that we can make use of, and already we've had offers of help from other companies who have offered us uh, office accommodation and so on. So we'll, we'll get over this, no, no problem. It's a bad time for it to happen, you know, we're... We're struggling like every other company is struggling right now, um, but oh, we've, we, we can get over this problem. The company is one of the longest established pump distributors in the UK, supplying markets across every sector, from food and drink to packaging and water treatment. Kevin Duffy for Channel M News. Thank you, Kevin. Next, anti-terror police searching one of the Cheatham Hill homes raided as part of raided by officers as part of a major operation have seized bags of sugar, a common ingredient in homemade explosives. It comes as officers continue to search 10 addresses in Cheatham Hill and Merseyside. 12 men suspected of planning to carry out devastating attacks were arrested in Manchester, Liverpool and Lancashire on Wednesday. Police ha haven't yet confirmed if the sugar find was one of their lines of investigation. Next, police are hunting gunmen who opened fire in a busy Salford pub over the weekend. The two men burst into the church inn in Pendleton on Friday lunchtime and fired two shots before fleeing on a, motor on a motorbike. Nobody was injured in the incident. Johnny Roadhouse, a Manchester music legend, died at the weekend aged 88. He'll be known to many as the man behind the music shop that he set up on Oxford Road half a century ago and which still bears his name today. Ben Bland now looks back at his life. Johnny the Sax Roadhouse, as he was known, is seen here playing the saxophone at his beloved music shop. Even at the start of this year, in his late 80s, he still worked there six days a week. Johnny had a long-time involvement in the Manchester music scene. As a young man, he played at various venues during the Second World War. As a backing artist, he worked with the likes of Bob Hope and Sir Elton John. He was also a founder member of the BBC Northern Variety Orchestra and BBC Northern Dance Orchestra. 
His partner, Anne Cowan, was too upset to appear on camera, but described him as a lovely, lovely person and a brilliant musician. Everybody loved him, she said, and he never had a bad word for anybody. Johnny Roadhouse set up this music shop on Oxford Road more than half a century ago. Unfortunately, it's not open at the moment, so we can't show you inside. But as you can probably tell from the shop front, it does stock an incredible range of instruments, from trombones to guitars to drums to saxophones, and the list simply goes on. Over the years, it's made a reputation for itself as the first port of call for any bands and musicians performing in Manchester. The likes of Oasis, The Happy Mondays, even Paul McCartney, they've all hired equipment or instruments from here. In fact, Oasis felt so affectionately about the place, they even featured it in one of their music videos. In the meantime, the front page of the shop's website has been changed as a mark of respect to a man whose passion for music will undoubtedly live on in Manchester. A man's fighting for his life after he was attacked in the street in Oldham. The victim, who's 30, was found with serious head injuries on the junction of St Mary's Way and Yorkshire Street in the early hours of Saturday morning. He's receiving specialist treatment for severe head injuries at Hope Hospital. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of murder after a man died outside a Manchester bar. Police were called to the picture and piano on Deansgate to investigate reports that a man was refusing to leave the area. When they arrived, they found the man being restrained. He collapsed and later died in hospital. A decomposed body has been found by firefighters who tackled a blaze at a derelict Bolton pub. The remains of the man, who's thought to be in his 50s, were found in the church hotel on Cook Street in the early hours of Saturday morning. The body hadn't been affected by the fire and the cause of death isn't yet known. Now, if you've got any pets, they probably enjoyed a few extra treats over the Easter weekend. But one little dog in Hume has, a, uh, has earned hers more than most. Penny, a West Highland Terrier, saved her owner from a house fire by running through smoke to scratch his bedroom door and wake him. Well, this is Penny, the brave dog at the heart of the story. And uh, unfortunately, she can't tell us what happened in her own words. But luckily, her owner, Sean, is with us to do so. Sean, just talk us through what happened that day. Um, I worked the night shift and uh, I was in bed and I was in bed a, a good six hours and then um, I woke up hearing Penny um, barking and scratching the door and I thought, oh, you know, what's wrong with her? Because normally she's downstairs, she's not allowed upstairs. And I, went, and I opened the door and the house was just full of smoke and uh, everything in panic. We just, like, both ran downstairs. Um, I threw Penny out of the kitchen window. I jumped out of the kitchen window and formed the fire brigade and just waited and at that time I'm stood outside with Penna and the house is burning down waiting for the fire brigade. Um, and it was brave of her to actually run up the stairs and towards the smoke rather than away from it? Yeah, which uh, we're still trying to work out, you know, because she's got to believe that she did that because she's 14 and she's got health problems and um, it's just not what a dog would do but she knew I was up there and it's her way of getting me out, really. So if it weren't for Penny, I wouldn't be here now. And she woke you up when the smoke alarm didn't? Yeah, um, obviously the smoke alarm was going, um, but obviously her bark, she barked over that and scratching on the door uh, overpowered that, and obviously she's my smoke alarm. And she's um, incredibly brave for what she did. Has she had any special treats or rewards? Um, yeah, she's had all the friends and uh, she's had all the friends, family and neighbours all spoiling her and everything, which she's not really because she's on a bit of a diet. But I just say, well, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's all our Christmas has come at once and mine as well. So, well done. OK, Sean and Penny, thank you very much. Uh, Penny, of course, has her photo in the paper and now she's on the telly. You could be looking at the most famous dog in Manchester, but certainly the bravest. Thank you, Ben. Next, Thai authorities are facing further unrest in Bangkok today. Yesterday, the Prime Minister declared a state of emergency, ordering soldiers onto the streets after anti-government protesters roamed the city, some of them taking over buses and barricades in the streets. The UK Foreign Office has warned against travelling to Bangkok. A Rochdale shopkeeper has been left scratching his head after council workmen installed a four-foot bollard outside his front door. Nain Shafi says it's proving a nuisance for passers-by and for his customers. The council keep coming round. Last time they extended the pavement, now they've just come and put a post. Usually, I, I'd assume that they come and ask you, or let you notify you, 
but they're not notified, nothing. They just come, they just whack the post and disappeared. The way it affects me because I have two old people's home at the moment, around that at the back, the residence, and they can't get the little scooters around. You know, the, the little scooters that you have, they can't seem to manoeuvre it around the corner. When I ask one person, he says, well, it's got to be 1.2 metres away from everything. I says, yeah, but you're expecting somebody, an old person that probably can't walk properly, to manoeuvre around the corner as if it's like a three-point turn. It's ridiculous, because, like, if a blind person walks past, they can easily walk into it. You can see a lamppost is middle of a, in the middle of the pavement as well. But that's a quite a tall thing. You knock yourself and you push to the side. With a bollard, you're straight over. Well, we have since heard from Rochdale Council. Now, they say the bollard was installed to prevent illegal driving over the pavement, but that it had been put in the wrong place and that it will be removed. Next, students are reporting lecturers if they turn up late for lessons by sending text messages to university bosses. Posters featuring a confidential hotline number have gone on display at Manchester Metropolitan University, encouraging students to text if tutors are more than 10 minutes late or cancel lessons at the last minute. The student union posters were put up with the support of the university after a number of complaints over lectures being cancelled. Cabinet Minister James Purnell is the latest MP to defend his use of allowances. Some leaked documents allegedly reveal that even though Mr Purnell earns £142,000 a year, he charges the taxpayer for the food he eats, putting up to £400 a month on expenses for groceries. A spokesperson for the Staley Bridge and Hyde MP says Mr Purnell hadn't done anything against the rules and that he supported the reform of the allowances system. Now, Channel M's put together a crack team to take part in the Manchester Booper 10K run next month and panicked by the prospect of letting the team down, Georgia Calvin-Smith signed up to a week of boot camp to kickstart her training. I hate running. It's official. But somehow I've been roped into a 10k race. Drastic action is needed. In order to avoid ending up weeping on the side of the road a la Paula Radcliffe, I headed out to the wilds of Cumbria with my brand new walking boots, determined to commit to a quick fit fix. I've gone to boot camp. The fitness levels increase over seven days. Each day they're going a little bit further, so they might have done half a mile, then they do a mile, and then when they look back and reflect on what they've actually done, they realise they've achieved a new goal. Move it, move it, move it. Ex policeman Joe Io, right. otherwise known as Coach, would be the man entrusted with my well being for the week. He and his sidekick, Staff T, would be whipping me and my fellow recruits into shape with a programme that promised to get me eating right, walking tall, and running fast. But it wasn't going to be easy. I quickly realised that if I stepped out of line, I'd spend a lot of my time squatting. It's the discipline that we need, yeah, because when people leave boot camp or they do anything, they've got to be disciplined when people are training for a, a 10k run. When they're out there pounding, yeah, the road, they need to be disciplined to keep pushing through the barriers that they create for themselves. There was no room for barriers at boot camp. During the first meeting, whether they were there for fitness or weight loss, everyone there was forced to confront some uncomfortable truths about themselves. Is that really lazy so far? It's what I've been told. Well, not been told, but what I've been forced to actually ask admit myself. Um, yeah, admit, confront, which is true. But I'm doing something about it. It was a little bit intense at some at times. I didn't expect it to be quite so cerebral. I thought there'd be more running. There was a lot of breaking people down. That scares me. He made me say that I was lazy and greedy. I'm sure there's a long-term plan. Oh, and there was. That first day, we got away with doing a two-mile walk at a relatively leisurely pace. Considering the beauty of the surroundings, it was almost enjoyable. And besides the pitifully unimaginative food, it wasn't too bad. But things were set to get a lot worse. It's five o'clock in the morning 
and I'm waiting for a knock on the door from staff T and coach who have promised me that they will be coming to pick me up for my morning weigh-in along with the rest of the team. Not the best way of starting my morning. And she's still got four days left to go. You can track Georgia's progress throughout the week. Time to take a look at the sports headlines now. And first, Manchester City boss Mark Hughes has defended his decision to leave Rubinho on the bench after his side slumped to a dismal 3-1 home defeat against Fulham yesterday. Stephen Ireland had given the Blues a half-time advantage, but just as they did in the corresponding fixture 12 months ago, Fulham turned the match on its head. The City vans vented their frustration at the final whistle after earlier chanting, you don't know what you're doing at Mark Hughes after he introduced Ched Evans for Valery Bodjinov while Rubinho remained on the bench. Now, there was better news for Manchester United. Federico Makeda climbed off the bench to snatch victory for the second time in a week as the Reds clawed their way back to the top of the table. The 17-year-old Italian needed just seconds to claim three points for his side with a 76th minute win at Sunderland and send the reigning champions back above Liverpool, who'd briefly headed them as a result of their 4-0 win over Blackburn. We'll have more on both of those games at five o'clock. We'll also have the results of the games that's involving our local teams today. Oldham face crew, Stockport are at home to Walsall, Berry travel to Darlington and Rochdale are at Shrewsbury. Still ahead on the lunchtime news, things are swinging in the print works. <laughs> Welcome back to Channel M's Lunchtime News. We're here every day between 12 and 1 with all of Greater Manchester's headlines. Now, don't forget, you can always check out our reports online at channelm.co.uk. If you take a look on there right now, Ben's having a look back at the life of the music legend, Johnny Roadhouse. And you can find out how George is getting on at boot camp for the 10K run. That's at channelm.co.uk. Now, you, you may remember last April, residents in Sale were fuming over a local building that was being painted black. Well, a year on, I went to see if those who live closest to it have got any more used to it. It's, it's dreadful looking, it really is. It's uh, a black monstrosity. Mm -hmm. Residents on Wolseley Road in Sale were so angry about Dalton House being painted black that they contacted the council to see if they could stop the owners, Bruntwood, from carrying on with the job. We were very surprised to find out they don't actually need planning permission to do that, so they were perfectly limited to paint it black. Because it's been here a year, people have got used to it, as you get used to anything, but it's still really not a very pleasant uh, building to have at the end of your street. So the painting went ahead, as did £2 million of renovation work, and now Bruntwood say they're offering one of the best office spaces in Sale and have even attracted the country's first custom-made showroom for the high-end motorbike company Ducati. So, what do you think? Well, Bruntwood, who own the building, say they're delighted with it. They say Ducati will bring a street-level vibrancy as well as great investment to sale. But look over here, there's still a massive retail space as well as 20,000 square feet of office space to be let. And residents say it's the not knowing what's happening inside the building that's upsetting them as much as the colour on the outside. It's still not finished, so um, I think people are just a bit concerned what, what's going to happen and what's it, what kind of trade it's going to bring, basically. I think, yeah, they should have actually spoke to residents a bit more, had, a, had more of a say on what was going on so that we actually had our views heard, basically. When I was very young, I used to go down there and stare at it quite a lot, and obviously it used to be white, but now it's black. So you don't go and stare at it as much? Not really, no. Well, before we had... Um, quite a lot of smashed windows, but I think it looks better, but I'm not sure about the colour. So, residents still not happy with the colour, nor with the way they've been treated. But they may not have succeeded by complaining to Trafford Council, but there's always Plan B. If I could find out who owns it and I was rich, I'd buy a house next to his and paint it like that <laughs> and leave it empty. <laughs> Nina Warhurst, Channel M News. Now, if you go down to Tatton Park today, you're in for a big surprise. Well, a teddy bear festival, to be exact.
Tatty Park, we've got a teddy bear festival this weekend um, from Easter Saturday to Easter Monday. Uh, basically, there's lots of events across the park. From in the gardens, we've got a teddy bear trail, which is following paw prints to a giant teddy bear. In the farm, we've got Eeyore, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. In the stable yard, we've got a magician and a teddy bear's hospital, which is where you can bring your teddy along and have him weighed, have his temperature checked. In the mansion, we've also got fantastic teddy bear displays, which are all in funny little scenarios and a few surprises there for our visitors. Um, actually, historically, we have a link with teddy bears because Brideshead Revisited, which has a, a famous teddy bear, Aloysius, was partly filmed at Tatton. So we thought it would be nice to join in the historical element with the full element of people bringing their teddies along as well. Next up, things really went with a swing when hundreds of people turned out to watch music and dance demonstrations from the 30s, 40s and 50s. The Printworks was transformed into a dance hall for the Swing Time Sunday. It's the fifth Easter Sunday Swing which has been organised every year by the Printworks. It's a free event which sponsors quite a few charities and it's all to do with swing music and rock and roll. The dancing in the 30s was mainly uh, um, swing dancing. We had the Balboa that started off because of the, um, the dance halls got very packed in the 1930s, 1940s. There wasn't enough room to move about, so people tend to dance very close together. Uh, the dancing is great, it's a partnered dance. Uh, and everybody just gets mucked in and has a really great time. Good on them. Let's take a quick look at your weather now. As you can probably see outside, it's beautiful here in the city centre outside Urbis. Looking across the rest of the region, it looks like everybody's just as lucky. Highs of around 15 degrees, a few clouds out, but that sunshine's really coming through just for your bank holiday, so make sure you enjoy it. Let's have a quick look at what's coming up for the rest of the week. As I said, do make the most of today because tomorrow it looks like the rain's on its way and that sunshine will be disappearing. Lows of four degrees on Friday. This is Channel M News, our top stories on this bank holiday Monday. An investigation's underway after a major blaze at one of Oldham's longest established companies. Flames ripped through premises of Marshall Pumps in the early hours of this morning. And Johnny Roadhouse, a Manchester music legend, has died at the, at the age of 88. He'll be known to many as the man behind the music shop that he set up on Oxford Road half a century ago and which still bears his name today. And a man says he owes his life to his little dog who barked and scratched at his bedroom door when fire broke out in their home. Sean McLaughlin was asleep at his Hume home when the blaze started in the bathroom, but, West, but the West Highland Terrier Penny ran upstairs to wake him. I'll have more on those stories in our news roundup at five o'clock, but from me and from the rest of the lunchtime team, have a very good afternoon and do enjoy your bank holiday.